Hey, what is up guys? Uh, as promised, today I'm bringing you my review of the $169 Lenovo Chromebook 3. We picked this thing up at Walmart a couple of weeks ago and I've been using it as my main device here at the office and around the house. So we're gonna decide today, can you get a Chromebook for $169 and it actually be worth it? Before we dive in, this video is brought to you by NordVPN. It is the VPN of choice for millions of users because it works across all devices, anywhere you go, on the go or at home, keep you safe and secure while browsing online. To learn more, head over to chromeunbox.com forward slash NordVPN. First off, we want to talk about build quality. When you're spending $200 or less on a Chromebook or any device for that matter, you don't really expect a whole lot. We've seen a lot of devices that come out of the box with flexible keyboard decks and the hinges are bad and they just feel cheap. The Lenovo 3 doesn't. It does not feel cheap. You get it out of the box, it looks good. It has that nice two-tone uh, textured lid. Granted, the whole thing is plastic, but they have a nice uh, textured contour on the bottom. It feels solid. It doesn't flex. And overall, it just feels like a way more expensive device. Uh, I compare it kind of to the Acer R11 that just felt solid, but it's not as chunky as the R11 either. So it doesn't feel like a giant brick if you throw it in your bag. It's a 11.6 inch device and it's relatively light in that vein. So overall, I give this thing a really, really high rating on the build quality. It doesn't feel like something that you have to worry about breaking. Now, it's not mil-spec rated like a lot of Lenovo devices and you're not gonna wanna dump some coffee on the keyboard, but at $170, it feels like a device that you can carry around with you and you don't have to worry about whether or not it's going to break. My number one concern when we bought this device was the display. What we've seen with 11-inch devices in the $200 to $300 price range is usually a TN panel at 220 nits, which doesn't have to be bad, but most times it just is. The viewing angles are usually horrible, the screen's washed out, the brightness is horrible. This device, I'm not gonna lie, it's not great. This is not a Pixelbook Go, it's not even a Samsung Chromebook Plus, but it is 250 nits, it is a TN panel, but the colors are better than most devices in this price range. The viewing angles are actually good. You can actually see the screen if you're sitting off angle. Uh, it's plenty bright for a device of this size. The colors are washed out. The color gamut's not great on it. But again, when you're looking at $170, you get a lot of passes and this screen was honestly a lot better than I expected. Uh, and again, this screen, it's not a touch display, but this isn't a convertible device either. So that's not something that a lot of consumers expect out of a regular clamshell. It does fold almost flat, but this just isn't a device that you're gonna wanna use in, a, in that type of manner. So for the panel that it has in it, it's not bad. And I definitely recommend it over a lot of other devices in this range. All right, moving down from the display, the keyboard on this was also better than I expected. Lenovo Lenovo just generally does well on their keyboards. They're not super great like a Pixelbook Go, but they're not bad either. The keys are firm. They have a good travel to them and a good click and it's comfortable typing on. I found myself with it extended to my external monitor and working on this keyboard. Many times I forgot that I was working on a $170 device. So it's not backlit, but again, it's a cheap device, this is a budget Chromebook, and you don't see a lot of devices in the 200 to $250 range that have a keyboard that's actually comfortable to type on. Again, it's not a Pixelbook or a Pixelbook Go, but I, I would be comfortable, I have been comfortable writing on this device for two weeks straight and never once thought, man, this is bad. Uh, the trackpad, it's plastic but it has a good click, the mechanism is good. It's not like we've seen some where the, the trackpad's floppy and you have to get in there and mess with it. It just, it feels good when you're using it, but again, it's plastic, and if you live in an area that has any type of humidity, you're gonna find your, your fingers stick from time to time. So I found myself wiping it down or, or having to dry my hands off a couple times during the day. But overall, I found the experience to be great and way better than I anticipated out of a device at this price. Another thing that's pretty impressive for this device is port selection. Uh, a lot of devices in this range will give you one of each. This has two USB-C, two USB-A, a micro SD card slot, and then of course the Kensington lock that only Best Buy uses. But for a device that's this cheap and this small, that's a lot of port selection. So you're not gonna have any problem adding peripherals and things of that nature. And then with the expanded storage of an SD card slot, you can use it for transferring photos or doing whatever. So I was pretty impressed by that. One area that I didn't even realize was as good as it is until today is the speakers. 
Uh, they don't have a lot of bass, but again, we talk about this all the time. Laptops don't have great speakers. They just don't. With the exception of some devices like the Pixelbook Go, you're just not going to sit and listen to music for uh, any length of time on a laptop. But this has downward firing speakers right at the front and they're slightly angled up. There's no bass, but they are super loud and very clear. So if you needed a cheap device to have at home to use for Zoom meetings, Google Meet conferences, things of that nature, this device would actually be great. It has a regular 720p camera, so that's not gonna be awesome, but what laptop has a great camera? But the speakers on it are gonna make for a really great experience if you're having to use video conferencing on a regular basis. So overall, ports, speakers, Again, out of the box, way better than I could have ever expected out of a device that costs less than $200. Uh, the reason this device caught our eye to begin with is because it has a newer Gemini Lake R processor and that's a N4020. Uh, most people aren't familiar with what all that stuff means. It's a Celeron processor. Now, a couple of years ago, Intel came out with the Apollo Lake chipsets, which a lot of manufacturers are still using. And honestly, they're not great. I wouldn't recommend them to even a student, uh, uh, elementary school student. The Gemini Lake R is different. It puts up really good octane scores and it's powerful enough for even the moderate user, people who have a lot of tabs open, watching videos, things of that nature. Uh, it has four gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of storage. And th those combined, working in my desktop for two weeks, I rarely ever had an instance where I thought, man, this thing's struggling. I had to have Linux apps open and media playing and a bunch of tabs before I realized that it was starting to slow down a little bit. And I remember sitting at the desk one day and looking at Robbie and thinking, man, my Pixelbook Go is acting weird today. And then I looked down and realized I wasn't on the Pixelbook Go, I was on this. So if you're worried about a cheap Chromebook not having enough power, I can tell you this device has enough for the average user. And when I say the average user, I mean the fat middle, people that are doing social media, uh, schoolwork at home, video conferencing for work. If you're doing spreadsheets, finances, things like that, this device is not gonna have a problem with it. It'll run Android apps just fine. There's not a lot that your average consumer is not going to be able to do with this. So if you just want something that's inexpensive, but will do the job and do it well, this device is definitely a good recommend. It's not just like, oh, it's cheap, so let's buy it. It's cheap and it's actually really good. And as I mentioned, we picked this one up at Walmart and it, it seems for now at least to be an exclusive to that store. Lenovo has a 64 gig model that retails for $229. This one is 169 and that's not a sale price. That is the price that they have it at Walmart. It's 32 gigs of storage. You can pick it up online or in store. But if you're wondering if this device will work for you, I think the answer is yes. And I definitely do recommend it. But that's it for this one, guys. Uh, if you like this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button below and don't forget to give us a like and hit that notification bell if you like the video and would like to hear more stuff like this because there's a ton more Chromebooks coming in 2020. So we're gonna have a lot more content to bring you. So until next time, we'll see you.